If one of your favorite parts of Genshin Impact is the combat and elemental reaction system, this video is for you. Since Dentro is the newest playable element and is at the top of the meta, while Geo's at the bottom and is well established, we need to dive a little deeper into why they stand where they do. How could Geo improve past a few specific use cases, and why won't Dendro be able to grow and mature in the future? First off, let's highlight the main difference between how Hoyoverse deals with Dendro and Geo. Attention. Obviously, Dendro was introduced in version 3.0, and Geo launched with the game, but it's been over a year now since Geo's gotten a new character with Yoon Jin back in version 2.4. But that's not the only way that Geo's been left behind. When's the last time that you've used the Geo character specifically for the crystallized reaction? If you're anything like me, the answer is never. All my shields come from specific shielders like Zhong Li and Layla, and those are the best shielders in the game. And that's right, folks, the best shields come from character abilities and not the elemental reaction singularly focused on creating shields. On the other hand, Dendro has been getting all the attention, not just in the form of character releases. Hyper Bloom, Kaveh Bloom, and Bountiful Bloom teams have very high damage potential, while a weaker reaction, Burning, really elevates Melt Comps. Reactions are just a part of why Dendro is high in the meta, but we'll touch on that a little bit later. Back down to the bottom tier, it's my opinion that Geo must be improved for the continued evolution of the game. No one plays it for the reactions, they just want to use a specific character's kit. Noelle in the early game for shields, heals, and maybe DPS, Zhongli for shields and DPS, and Yunjin for non-Geo normal attack support are just some of the examples. But not everyone will agree with me that Geo needs to be pumped up. You might think that if Geo is improved, Something else will have to take its place at the bottom, maybe physical. Then, someone like me could come along and say, oh, the bottom layer needs buffed, and now physical needs elevated. In this way, we'd end up with a rotating cycle of adjustments until everything evens out. As a former Destiny 2 player, I had to constantly keep up with their weekly buffs and nerfs. I'm not kidding, they literally have like a little newsletter they put out called This Week at Bungie. Every week, the meta was adjusted. Now, I wouldn't want to see that on a monthly or even yearly basis in Genshin, watching the characters I farm for absolutely drop off the meta. So even considering that opposing viewpoint, I still believe that Geo needs to be buffed, but in ways that don't cause this circular buff-debuff cycle. All I'm asking is that Hoyoverse makes the Geo element somewhat better and harder content, not from individual character kits. And I have five ideas on how this can be achieved. Upon triggering Crystallize, the damage from the element that reacted with Geo should receive a buff, somewhere up to 60%. Hey, I can read the comments that you're typing out right now, just, 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 Pause there for a moment. I can see that what I'm asking for is very similar to Four Piece Archaic Petra. But did you know that you only get the buff when the character equipped with the artifacts is on field to pick up the crystals? Mm. Yeah, you could put the set on your DPS, but name me a non Geo carry that would wear it well. Not Hu Tao, or Ganyu, or Raiden Shogun, or Yalan, and certainly not anyone else, considering the two piece effect boosts Geo damage. On top of everything else, the AP set only provides 35% damage bonus, whereas other artifacts like Furious and Venner give 60 while reducing resistance by 40. This could be added to Geo Resonance, but I feel like that would be a little bit too good to get for free. Maybe Archaic Petra needs to be adjusted to make activating the buff easier, or maybe the effect just needs to get worked into Crystallize with a lower damage bonus of just maybe 30%. This would then parallel how Superconduct decreases the enemy resistance of physical damage by 40%. The second suggestion I have for buffing Geo as an element works hand in hand with the first, allowing us to create Geo auras. This might work as a kit for a specific character, but I think it would work better as an overall change. But either way, shields would be more viable if they could be reliably generated from the Geo character off field. Then with the first change I suggested, all you have to do to buff your DPS would be to set up your Geo aura, then go to town crystallizing with another character. Building on this thought again, Geo Auras would open the door for reaction chains, like what we see with Dendro. They would have to be directional, meaning that there'd have to be a specific order in which the elements were applied, but we already see that in forward and reverse melt and vape. For this interaction, I have one specific idea. Applying Geo to another element would still always crystallize, but using Geo first and then Hydro would initiate a new reaction, maybe called Erode or Erosion, dealing ticks of Hydro damage. This in turn would fit nicely into Vape teams, just like the pairing of Burning and Melt. My next idea would fit more to utility than damage, self-applying Geo Auras. If we could do this, all Geo characters would be cleansers as well as shielders at the same time. This would incentivize players to bring Geo Cleansers to fights with enemies who deal perpetual damage if an element is applied, or simply easy aura removal. 
Finally, I'd like to see Hoyo Wine petrification. As of right now, the only ability that can petrify is Zhongli's burst. I think it'd be very interesting if some new characters are released with this ability, with a tweak that petrified enemies would have all defenses lowered by 20 or 30%. Now that we've covered some ways that I think Geo can improve, let's discuss why Dendro can't. First and foremost, it doesn't need to. It was introduced at the top of the meta intentionally, and I can't see the big draw of a new version falling by the meta wayside. Additionally, four characters have already cornered the market on Dendro teams. Nilu, Tainari, Baiju, and Nahida. Let's pick some Dendro characters and see if they fill roles other than these four. Kave? Nope, he works with Dendro cores and Nilu's just better. Yao Yao? Nope, she heals and applies Dendro, with Baiju and Nahida being better at each individual role. Kirara? Nah, Baiju just works better in teams while filling that shielder role. Kali? No, Tainari is just literally a better version of her. As you can see, Dendro's introduction to the top of the meta and the release of four characters that cover nearly every use case neatly contain and restrain Dendro's potential to evolve in the future. Now it's time to touch on some changes coming down the line. One of the easiest ways to buff specific elements or reactions would be to add in new mechanics and effects, specific to certain characters, elements, or weapons. I've heard rumors that something like this might drop in 4.0, but I'm not sure if those are leaks or just hopes and thoughts of the community. Something that was confirmed by Hoyoverse, however, is Dainsliff being a playable character, at least eventually. This was mentioned in a live stream on September 27th, 2020, and of course, no date was given as to when Dane would get a banner. By playing through the Archon interlude quests, we learn that Dainsliff has some unique abilities that don't fit into any element that we currently have, so speculation is that he wields a power from either Celestia or the Abyss. But again, that's all yet to be confirmed. All this to say that the easiest way to adjust the power of elements like Geo and Dendro would be to tweak how they work with these new elements or effects in the future, if any end up being added. So whether you like Shatter Comps or Nilu Bloom teams, hopefully you have a better understanding of where Dendro and Geo sit in the current meta, and some things Hoyoverse could do to even everything out a bit. For those of you who have watched this far into the video, I have a special announcement. I want to start giving back to you guys for all the support and interaction in the comments, so I'll be starting to do giveaways on my Twitch streams. We'll all be hanging out on 4.0 launch day while we're waiting for the servers to come up, so come play some Genshin quizzes with me, and we'll see who can win some raffles for Welcome Moons. They will be for followers only, so uh, you can actually get a jump on that from the link in the description. Make sure to stop by even if you're watching this video after version 4.0 releases because I'll be continuing to give back more in the future. Thanks so much for the support and I hope to see you on Twitch. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video.